Hello and welcome on The Watches TV. Welcome here at The Watches Club in Geneva. And today we're taking our watchmobile up to the magical Val de Travers to Fleurier, to be more precise, and go behind the scenes of the new FB2 by Ferdinand Bertou. And for the very first time in a wristwatch, where well, we see the combination of a fusée chain mechanism coupled to a remontoir d'égalité, and all this for the beauty of chronometrical performance, and a bit more, obviously. So let's discover all about it together. Enjoy. In the quest for precision, uh, is a key driver of Bertou because, uh, historically speaking, already, and continues to be for us. One could, of course, argue that uh, you know how how important is that, but we believe it's important and it's also a challenge which we we like. Before the technical aspect of the product, it was a historical call because uh, Ferdinand Berthoud in his last book, History by Time Measurement, uh, explained in details the working of the remontoir d'égalité. And apparently he was himself um, making some trials, but had no time to achieve his work because he deceased five years later. So for us, it become logical that uh, as a tribute to this work and for the 250th anniversary uh, of uh, his title of clockmaker to the king, we wanted to, um, to achieve this remontoir d'égalité. The mission was to combine what has never been done before, the remontoir d'égalité with the fusée chain, still uh, staying true to the initial idea of the FB1, but uh, to introduce this additional precision function. And in a way, it was also an experiment to find out how much and how we could improve precision even further. The remontoir d'égalité, uh, on a technical point of view, seems very simple. You have a small uh, subsidiary hairspring that is placed before uh, the escapement wheel, then that stores the energy in this uh, hairspring and re release the energy every second to the escapement. So this allows to uh, compensate for the teeth mesh uh, and the variations created. Very small variations, but when we talk about chronometric performance, every uh, variation has its importance. So technically it looks simple, but when you try to achieve it, especially with a low frequency, like the one we have for the FB2 movement, that means 2.5 Hz only, then it starts to be a real challenge. Here we are in the field of pure chronometry, like in old marine chronometers. You have to consider all the cinematic, uh, all the energy between the various uh, parts, and you discover that you cannot use the same fusée and chain as the FB1, you have to rework it. And of course, your balance wheel is also not possible to use. So you have to change each part in the movement. Over 500 years of watchmaking, uh, or if you reduce it more, 200 years of watchmaking, let's say, looking at, uh, at Berthoud uh, marine chronometers and everything else, uh, the, the increments uh, with every of progress uh, have become smaller and smaller and smaller. Um, but it's also the beauty of, uh, of the challenge which we like to take up. But at the time of Berthoud, they, the, the way they walked the time they, 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 they took to achieve a, a single marine chronometer was much longer and they had an experience uh, that we have forgotten today. In this field of uh, remontoir d'égalité, without a tourbillon, nobody has never achieved a chronometer certification by the cost. So we make two certifications. 15 days uh, cost certification for the movement, and then uh, 50 hours uh, complete uh, test, uh, wearing test, dynamic test with the flurry test. We had as much as possible to, to, be, to guarantee the accuracy and stability of the movement. Once again, everyone commented that, well, yes, we should have this, we should see this on the other side, we should see this on the wrist, but um, I think it's quite nice to have it in the back and, and to make it a, a special moment and admire it uh, once in a while. From the very first step of the design, we say we will hide 
any element that is not ash essential to allow for the first time the collectors seeing the remontoir working because other remontoirs existing on the markets they are hidden between bridges somewhere impossible to see how it works and that was the first step to say okay how can we make that the key element visible and easy to understand inspiration when you look at the dial obviously also comes again from some old drawings that we have not forgetting the dead second function which is also a, a bertou signature actually we we just reinterpret the design of the longitude clock number six of mr bertou uh, the one that was uh, tested at sea and uh, we reinterpret the design uh, in a more uh, contemporary way we uh, went for uh, grand feu enamel and what is extremely difficult with the, the, the production of this dial is that the peripheric part uh, where the, the minutes uh, and the second is display, this element is bombé. And uh, so enamel on a bombé surface is something that as per my Anderson has never been achieved on a wristwatch. It's, it's extremely complex, uh, but makes the watch, when you wear it on the wrist, looks exactly like a marine chronometer. The round case design was something we wanted to do for a while. So the challenge was to take the uh, characteristic elements like bolts and also the hublot, take this over in the round shape. So basically the feel and the design elements that you have here are found on the round shape case as well. To uh, increase this spectacular effect on the suspended elements of the movement on the back of the watch, uh, we uh, redeveloped the technique of frosting. So it's a completely manual finishing. You took the plate uh, that is crafted in nickel silver material and then you have with a brush uh, to uh, scratch the surface very smoothly in every direction. So it takes hours to, to make and at the end you must have a surface that, that is absolutely peerless, absolutely no scratches visible and this is this technique, this antique technique of frosting that has nothing to do with uh, satin finishing or sandblasted finishing because the frosting lifts the material and that makes everything shiny. The team that makes the decoration spend one year to, 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 make, uh, to make testing, trying to learn, to adapt to the, the speed, uh, change the brush material. It's, it's a really complex, very old technique that is today uh, not very often used. Very, very few watchers have this category of finishing. And of course, uh, as usually for, for our movements, we spend uh, hours of hand finishing using uh, only uh, uh, hand, uh, hand tools, the same tools that Mr. Bertou could have on his desk in the 18th century. Uh, we try to prohibit as much as possible the use of electricity, so we try to finish everything by hand. We see that the the collectors who, have, who are extremely well educated, who understand about watchmaking, fine watchmaking, and that usually acquire extraordinary timepieces, they really uh, enjoy this, this level of finishing. They, they fully understand and they really appreciate. Well, for the moment, uh, we will accomplish the, the very limited production of 10 pieces. And uh, the FB2, uh, as a round case uh, will continue, just like the FB1 continues uh, in different versions and uh, obviously we, we have a number of briefs uh, waiting and, and, and projects in the pipeline. But the importance is to admit that every one of those projects will take the time it takes. It is impossible to rush things when you're working that type of uh, environment. Well, I hope you all enjoyed this and I would like to make a special thank to the team of Ferdinand Bertou because can you imagine this, that since the first lockdown of this spring, well, we were the first external team being able to visit them 
and damn if that felt good to be back into a manufacturer. So yes, a special thanks for your hospitality and sharing with us as much as possible regarding this new timepiece, another fine demonstration of watchmaking art. So all the very best to all, thanks for watching and sharing, see you real soon and viva beautiful watchmaking! <laughs>